Welcome to The Rusted Garden. Today I want to do a comprehensive video on seed starting peppers indoors. Today is March 4th and I've had these peppers starting somewhere from the middle of January all the way through February so I can show you different stages and really cover the whole process. I want to start right at the beginning and again this video is really for people that are just starting uh, growing transplants indoors or if you want to learn more about peppers. But if you don't need all the stages just fast through fast forward through the video. The first thing is is seed starting mix. You do not want to use soil from outdoors. You will bring in fungus and insects. So you want to get a bagged product that usually stays indoors. And that would be like Jiffy starting mix. That's what I like to use. They're in the mylar bags that are sealed. Now that being said, because it's a natural product, you're probably going to get fungus gnats. They have um, and pretty impressive ability to lay eggs that kind of last through everything. You can pour boiling water into here to try to kill off any eggs. I put neem oil in here now to disrupt the uh, growing process of any potential fungus or insect eggs or anything that might be in here. You can microwave it. Um, I don't recommend freezing it because the eggs can last through a freeze. Also pre-moisten the soil, put some water in there, get some fluid into it because if you just use dry mix it's not going to really draw water in when you go to water. I'll talk more about that when we get to the watering. So it's a pre-moistened mix. Drop it into the seed tray. Fill it once. Thumb pack it down. Fill it again and you have a great starting bed for your pepper seeds. I do not put fertilizer in here at the beginning. The actual seed will, put, will supply enough nutrients to the plant to get germinated and get going and we'll talk about fertilizing afterwards. I used to say go ahead and put some organic fertilizer in there, go ahead and put in some processed chemical fertilizer. I found the organic fertilizer can cause fungus and mold growth. It doesn't hurt your plants but it's unsightly and the plants just really don't need it. So here are two trays that are set up and you want to start two seeds per space and if you're not doing a lot of seeds you could go ahead like for instance I'm going to do um, cayenne red pepper I'm going to do an orange cayenne serrano and this is an Anaheim pepper if you're only doing a couple you can go ahead and just put them into a cup or a container like this this way you can skip the transplant you can skip planting it in something small like this and having to transplant it up but if you're doing a lot of a lot of uh, peppers, you can do it this way. So just start by dropping two seeds in and just press it in. You can do a quarter inch, a half an inch. I did plenty of experiments and found that the pepper seeds will germinate at any depth. All right, and that's all you do. Cover them up. You would label them, put the date on there, and you're good to go. Now peppers are going to take anywhere probably from 7 days to 21 days to germinate. Let me show you what I mean. So in this flat, I started these on February 11th. So today is March 4th, so what's that been? Uh, 17 days plus 6. So 23 days. So this is about three weeks in. And what you'll notice are like this variety, much larger, germinated more quickly. This was uh, a bell pepper, a wonder bell. Both of these groups are bell peppers. So they germinate pretty quickly. And then you come on over to this group and you can see that some of them are just germinating now and this is a poblano. So different varieties of peppers will take a longer time to germinate. So don't get discouraged but it's going to take somewhere between 7 and 21 days. This is how I start all of mine. My grow closet stays at about 70-75 degrees. Peppers like heat to germinate. So you could put a heat mat under here. That's going to raise the temperature up to about 80 degrees, a little bit more. And these will germinate quicker the warmer they are. Once you use a heat mat, they germinate, they break the surface. In about two or three days you can shut off the heat mat with the assumption that your you know, grow closet or the room that they're in are going to stay around 70 degrees Fahrenheit. But a heat mat will 
speed up the germination process, but you don't need to leave the heat mat on through the whole process. I mean, once they start growing, shut it off, and they will grow just like this with no problem. So I keep mine in a tray just like this, and I bottom water. And what bottom watering is, is instead of pouring the water right on top of the surface, which is going to possibly splash out starting mix, move the seeds, and if you have disease or funguses, you're going to spread the disease and fungus with the splashing water. You don't want to do that. And it's more time consuming. I water just by keeping stuff in a jug like this, fill up the tray this way to about a quarter depth of the tray, and just let the trays soak up the water from the bottom. These have just been watered. They're nice and dark. Whatever they don't absorb in 15 or 20 minutes, just pour out. But you'll find that you get you know, pretty good practice at eyeballing how much they're going to need. The other question I get is, how often do I water these? And the answer is, one time a week to five times a week. It depends on their size, depends on how warm your grow lights are, it just depends on what's going on. But you watch the top of the soil. When this soil becomes light, I have videos on it if you want to look it up, when the top of the soil dries out, gets to the light brown, the color that the starting mix looks like when it doesn't have any water, that's when you bottom water. The top will dry first, moisture will stay below it, moisture will stay down here in the root system, so as soon as you see the top dry, it's a good time to water. It's also a good idea to let the tops dry because that helps take care of some disease and fungus issues. If you always keep the soil moist, the top is always moist, the fungus and molds are going to keep growing. So if you let them dry out, it really disrupts their growth cycle. And here's an example from another video. This is salad bowl lettuce, which is not healthy. This is what legginess is called. But you can see the difference in the tops. Same starting mix. This is fully saturated. This is dried out and the tops are light brown. So that's what you look for is the light brown color. Now for lighting, this is an example of lettuce not getting enough light. They get tall, they get thin, they get leggy. The same thing will happen with your peppers. So you can either, if you have grow lights, make sure the grow lights stay above them and I recommend that the lights stay on top on for 18 hours when they just break the surface and keep them on for 18 hours for, I don't know, three, four, five, six, seven days after germination. That's when they need the most light. That extra light will keep them from getting leggy and spindly and it'll be nice and stocky. Once a week goes by, cut the lights down to anywhere from 12 to 16 hours, whatever you'd like to do. And that will get these off to a great start. Now, there's no feed in here. They don't need to be fed yet, but they're getting close and we'll talk about feeding in a second. Let me talk about acclimation, because there's two ways to do it. And again, I know this is a lot of information, but I want to put it all in one video for those of you that just want to watch it start to finish. Acclimation is a process of taking your indoor plants and putting them outdoors in a way that the sun, the wind, the cold doesn't burn, doesn't harm, doesn't stress out the plants. These plants have no resistance to the sun, the UV rays, because they've been growing comfortably indoors. Two ways to do it. When your seeds are germinating, if you can take this outside and it's, you know, 40 degrees or warmer, just put this out in the sun for about an hour, let the sun hit these newly germinated plants and they will start getting a tolerance to the sun. You will start acclimating them and just do that, you know, for an hour every day if you can or every other day and you're going to be acclimating them why they're mostly growing indoors, but you're going to be taking them in and out so when they get to this size, they have sun tolerance built up. They're you know, getting the wind blowing across them. They're feeling the cold weather, so they're going to be a tougher plant. Now, if you can't do that and your plants get to this size and they're ready to go out, you have to slowly acclimate them to the outdoors over a week. And I can't give you an exact recipe because if it's a cloudy day, they can stay out longer. If it's a sunny day, they can only stay out 15 minutes. So what you want to do is start with 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes for the first day. Let them get some sun, some wind, some cold, bring them back inside. Next day, same amount of time. Third day, you can start lengthening the amount of time. Fourth, fifth, sixth day, you can be moving into an hour or so. Seventh day, you can give them a lot of sun. If you're able to put these out when it's a fully cloudy day, give them four or five hours with 
being outside, they can get used to the cold, the wind, the clouds will protect them from the sun, and you can slowly harden them off, is, the, is one of the terms used. Harden them off to the elements. But you have to make sure you acclimate these, or when you move them outside, you're going to be really disappointed because all of your great growth is going to be harmed by the sun, the wind, and the cold. So we have the plants growing at this stage now. This is about, what do we say, 23 days, about three weeks worth of growth. They aren't quite ready for a feeding, but they're getting close. And when they all have their second leaves, that's a, their second leaves. That's their actually first set of true leaves. When all of them have their first set of true leaves, I'm going to give them a liquid fertilizer. I prefer to use the processed chemical fertilizers because they cover everything. They don't smell. They don't attract insects. But you can use, if you want, um, oh, that's actually kelp meal. You could use fish emulsion. That's a 511 fertilizer. You want a low fertilizer. I recommend using something that stays under a 555 NP and K. I like using the organic fertilizers outdoors. I just don't like the smell. Plants do not care. I don't care what people tell you. Organic gardening is great, but you don't have to be an organic gardener to be a great gardener or to have healthy food. The processed chemical fertilizers do not hurt you. They do not hurt plants at this stage. There is no soil life growing in here, so these chemicals aren't going to harm your, uh, the microbiology in soil. You just don't have it. This is plain old basic starting mix. And if I didn't mention, I just want to make sure that when you set up your seed starting mixes, you don't use soil that's been sitting outside because it will bring in insects and disease. All right, so how often do you feed them? Well, this is a 10-10-10 fertilizer. So use this at half strength, quarter strength, a 2.5, a 2.5, a 2.5 NPK, or something around a 5.5.5 is perfectly fine. I would just use it once a week. You can use the fertilizer, keeping it low once a week. That will be plenty of nutrition for these plants, and this is what they've been getting. They've been getting that fertilizer I just showed you, and they're doing really, really well. So that's about three weeks worth of growth. Then we come over to these plants, pepper plants, that were started on 128. So these have four weeks. So these are at about five weeks. And at five weeks, they look great. This is when they're getting close to really be transplanted up into these pots. And the way you tell is really by size. These guys are ready to go. You can simply pop out the plant, look at the bottom, and when you see the roots starting to curl at the bottom, they're close. This guy could go another week or so in this container, but he's ready to be potted up. And what I do is I either use some recycled containers, my neighbors always give them to me, or a plastic container this way. Styrofoam cups are great. If you don't like styrofoam, pick a cup or a container of your choice. But you want about an 8 ounce cup. Let me just see what this was. This is an Escamillo, and this is how I like to label it. I like these cups because you can write right on them. So just label it Escamillo. It was started... What do we get for the dates on here? On 128, so I put an S for starting date, 128, and then a T for transplant date of March 4th. Now, we use starting mix to get these going. When you're moving them up into the cups, you can then go to the bag soil, the stuff that's outside. If you bring it inside, you're still gonna get insects, but at the point where these are going to be outside mostly, you're perfectly fine to use a bag soil that's been, you know, sitting outdoors. Like any kind of potting mix or grow mix that you want to use. But what I have here is the starting mix. Now, I do mix neem oil into my starting mix to help deal with fungus and diseases. And all you do, fill it up, put a nice big finger circle in there, I'm going to remove this plant, and this one germinated late, but I just want a single plant in here. Drop it in, maybe just a quarter inch or so over the stem. Press it in. Add in a little more soil, and it's good. And make sure you put holes in the bottom. Now this will also go into the same tray 
that I showed you just like this and then I just put in all of my cups or my containers through here and I still bottom water. It's the easiest way to do it because you just fill the tray real quick the plants will absorb what they need. So we've started with planting the seeds. You saw what three weeks growth looked like. This is about five weeks growth. And then the plants over here are only 13 days. Let's see what we got. These were started on 115. These were started on 128. So this is about seven weeks worth of growth. So all the plants here have been growing for seven weeks. They're nice and strong. They've been actually getting acclimated to go outdoors, but I still won't be able to put these out for about five weeks. And I wanted some peppers just to get really strong and tall. At this point, I'm also doing something where I'm growing, going to be growing two peppers right next to each other because I read that that's something that you can do. And they do really, really well for a long time. I just want with the information that they have to be, you know, one plant per hole spaced about two feet apart. And that probably isn't true. Now, when they get to this size, you can do something that's called topping them off. And you would do this when you still have three, four weeks, five weeks of indoor growth. And what you do, we'll do it with this one. And this one, just to give you a reference, this was started around 118. It was transplanted in here on February 26th and today is March 4th. Once you transplant them into here, you want them to grow for at least a week or 10 days before you do this, but you're going to top them off. That means you're going to just, I've got to put it down here to do it. You're going to take off the growing tip, pinch it off. Your plant will look like this. I removed the growing tip. This would just have kept growing up just like that. What this is going to do, it's going to force side shoot growth from here. The plant's going to be stockier. It's going to have more side growth and you're going to get more blooms and more peppers that way. What I found was that most peppers enjoy this. It makes them stronger. Don't do it with banana peppers. Don't do it with bell peppers. I found they don't really benefit from having the tops taken off, but most of the other peppers really seem to do well. All right, so now we've gone from seed to, you know, three week old seedlings, five week old plants that are ready to come out of the cells, go into the cups. Now these are going to stay in here, like I said, four to five weeks. They will be fed same way that I explained once a week with a organic fertilizer or a chemical process fertilizer. Either one is fine at about a 555 NPK or lower. And these aren't going to go into the ground until the ground temperatures are about 50 degrees, a bit, the ground might be a little bit colder, but you want 50 degree nights, 70 degree days, acclimate these to the outdoors and you will have really healthy, great looking pepper transplants that will get you produce, will get you peppers sooner to your table because you've been growing them indoors for eight to 12 weeks. That's the benefit. You get nice sized plants out there as soon as the ground is ready, rather than putting in a pepper seed and then having to wait eight to 12 weeks for it to get to the size, you're already there. Hope you enjoyed the video, quite comprehensive. I know it was, that it was long, but I hope it gives you an understanding start to finish on what you need to do for growing peppers indoors and getting your transplants going. Please check out my blog at www.therustedgarden.blogspot.com. Also check out my YouTube videos. I also have a seed and garden shop where you can buy the seeds that I'm growing in my videos and grow as I grow. Thanks.